Hi, my name is Thomas. I'm a developer here at OxyLabs, and today I'm going to be presenting to you bypassing sophisticated antibot systems at scale using Web Unblocker. I'll go over the agenda real quick. I'll be presenting different antibot types, browserless and headless scraping, what is scraping at a large scale, and how you may benefit from it. I'll present to you Web Unblocker, and I'll show you a quick demonstration on how to implement browserless, headless scraping, as well as how to use our web unblocker. So first things first, we can define antibot types into two main ones. That would be the passive antibot type, which is mostly done when the target is checking the HTTP request information and defining whether or not to pass you through to the website based on such information as HTTP protocol and headers. They may check your headers for specific ones such as user agent, referrer, accept language. They may also check your IP address. How often do they encounter this specific IP address being visiting their website? They may also check TLS versions from the HTTP request. We can also define an active antibot type, which is mostly done when the target is checking the visitor based on JavaScript challenges. These challenges may include checking the visitor for their hardware specifications, such as does the user agent match up the one found in the web driver? Does the browser contain any extensions or plugins? Does the browser show any information of history length? If you're doing any actions on the website, it may track your mouse movements or how often and how far apart are actions made. As we do have these two antibot types that we've defined, we can approach this problem in two ways. We can implement browserless scraping. That would be using simple curl requests Axios packages that do not require a browser and simply do the request to the target. As it does not require a browser, it is less resource intensive and it is faster. But if the website requires JavaScript rendering, for example, for those um, JavaScript challenges that are provided, you would require headless scraping. Of course, if you're using a browser, and even though it can bypass JavaScript challenges of the more sophisticated targets, it does contain overhead, as you are now having to manage actual browser binaries that have their own startups and teardowns. Also, in addition to headless, you can use headful scraping, which is the same headless scraping method of using a browser, but with the actual browser graphical user interface which also allows you to appear more natural to the website. If you are going to be doing your own scraping operation, you may come to a point where you need to scale it. This problem can be approached in two ways. You may think of vertical scaling, which is boosting your scraping process throughput per instance, meaning per scraper, by, for example, adding more CPU, more network throughput, more RAM for browsers if you're managing them. And when you're happy with that, you can think of horizontal scaling. It is when you create parallel scraping processes by adding the same vertically scaled instances to the stack. And then you would manage all of those parallel instances by load balancing throughout all of them. This is where we can present Web Unblocker, machine learning based proxy solution that can bypass sophisticated antibot systems. It features automatic proxy pool management, browser fingerprint generation, auto retry system, response recognition, JavaScript rendering, and session reuse support. And now let's get into the demonstration part where I'll be showing you how to implement browserless, headless scraping, and how you may use Web Unblocker for your scraping operation. So first things first, I'm going to be presenting to you five different scripts for browserless, headless, and web scraper implementations. I'll be scraping Carrefour, a retail website. I've collected 
over a thousand URLs from it by using Webcrawler, our product. And the first demonstration, we'll be using HTTPX for requests. We'll be using TakeUDM for measuring the progress and we'll be using IOMeter to limit the amount of jobs that we're doing per second. We've also defined a simple proxy for the first four examples. It is a residential proxy from France. In the first example, we can see that we're generating a thousand requests to the random URLs from the input URLs file. And then we'll be asynchronously making requests to the website. It is a naive approach without any custom settings headers, only by using proxy. So in this case, we can see that we are doing 40, 50 jobs per second, but it's mostly 403 status codes, which is not helpful. In the second example, it is mostly the same, but I'll be also adding user agent, referrer code, and I'll be trying to retry on wrong status, which is anything that's not a 200 status code response. And if I launch the example, we can see that we're still receiving 403, 301 status codes, which is not great. If we investigate the target ourselves, we can see that the website requires JavaScript rendering. So in the third example, I'm using Playwright for the headless scraping part. I'll be using the default Chromium browser binary, and I'll be setting a proxy on it. If I launch the example, we will see that it takes a lot longer for us to make the jobs. It's taking second and a half over an iteration, and it's still returning us 403s, which means that we're not able to access the content that we want. In the fourth example, I'll be adding referrer code and I'll be also using the new headless browser from Chrome. I'll also be trying to handle the status codes that we may receive and retry on timeouts. If I'll launch this code, it also takes a bit longer to start. But we can see that even through multiple retries, we do receive 200 responses. I've also written a custom parser for this. It's a simple one using Beautiful Soup, which tries to parse the product's price and title from the website. So in the fourth example, on the 200th responses, we are able to parse the price and the title, meaning that the scrape was successful. Now for the fifth example, where we'll be using Web Unblocker, we're going back to the HTTPX library and we'll be doing simple requests via Web Unblocker, but we'll be using custom Web Unblocker headers that mention that we require rendering for this website and we require a specific geolocation of friends for this website. The rest of the code is the same as in the first two examples. We'll also be retrying on non-200 status codes and we'll be trying to parse the response. So if I launch the script, we should be seeing that we are going to be receiving 200 responses when using Web Unblocker to scrape the target. As you can see, it is successful. We're able to do it with an increasing amount of speed on average. And if we'll visit the example responses, we will also include the Oxilabs job ID, which we can refer to it later. But as we can see, we have 200 status codes responses and we're able to parse prices and titles for the various products that we are scraping. To sum up, websites use antibot solutions that are becoming more dynamic, making it harder for you to scrape data. The implementation of specific scraping techniques allows you to bypass sophisticated antibot systems and scrape all the public data you need. Web Unblocker 
covers described techniques and allows you to bypass said antibot systems at a large scale. Thank you for listening.